El británico Keith Sinclair se mudó a Puerto Rico en 2015 para desarrollar una serie de proyectos hoteleros con el respaldo de millonarios créditos contributivos. Pero a seis años de llegar a la isla, la mayoría de sus construcciones están sin completar o apenas comienzan. A preguntas de El Nuevo Día, Sinclair reconoció que los atrasos han afectado su imagen como inversionista. Uh, I, I presume it did. It's not stopping me doing what I'm doing. I mean, I'm moving forward. I mean, there've been a lot of impacts in the five years since I came to Puerto Rico. We had Maria, we had Zika, we had earthquakes, we had a government meltdown, and now COVID. So, you know, five interesting challenges in Puerto Rico. And you know, let me tell you, I'm, you know, I'm still here, still, still building my projects, still creating jobs. Pleitos legales, deudas y negociaciones inconclusas enmarcan las inversiones de San Clair en Puerto Rico. Recientemente, First Bank lo demandó reclamando el pago de 3.6 millones de dólares y el empresario admitió que esta no es su deuda más pequeña. I didn't know there was a lawsuit because we had been negotiating with First Bank and that negotiation, as far as we were concerned, was moving forward. The lawsuit is now going to be dismissed. We've entered into a forbearance agreement with the bank and we are making certain payments. You know, the reality was COVID came and no revenue. We renegotiated our debt structure with all of our lenders. First Bank was almost our smallest lender. Um, we have uh, loans on assets with Popular, with Oriental, with the Crescent, with Parliament and First Bank, five primary lenders on the multiple projects we have in Puerto Rico. Gran parte de sus inversiones ubican en la zona turística de Isla Verde, donde desarrolla tres hoteles desde hace varios años. Estas imágenes muestran la piscina, los pasillos y algunas habitaciones de su Hotel Mare que ha rehabilitado tras adquirir una parte de las antiguas ESJ Towers. Al frente ha construido el Hotel Jade con una inversión de 35 millones de dólares. Cuando le preguntamos por qué permanece cerrado, esta fue su respuesta. El... You know what? <laughs> That's a great question. It's a question I've asked myself a lot as well. Um, basically, the project is substantially completed and has been for about a year and a half. We have a major dispute with the contractor, the general contractor. We've been in arbitration on that property for now nearly 18 months with no resolution. I'm hopeful that this hotel will open before Christmas this year. Y aquí, en este espacio, espera construir un hotel lujoso con el nombre de Noir. But that will be a five-star hotel, maybe even a six-star hotel. That is going to be a, um, an, an iconic legacy property. The Noir is in, is in the planning stages with the municipality. Um, we finished the design. We finished the creativity. Um, we finished negotiations with the DNRA uh, about four weeks ago. We finally uh, got the clearance from the Civil Aviation Authority to go to 203 feet on that site. The investment to date is about eight to nine million dollars in total, including the bank debt. And basically the final investment in that will be over 50 million dollars over the course of the next two and a half years. Otro proyecto prácticamente estancado es el Puerto Rico Film District que prometió construir detrás del centro de convenciones en Miramar. Hace tres años colocó la primera piedra. Actualmente, esto es lo que vemos. Used to be a naval base, and they had 18 very large old buildings. So first we had to remediate the 18 buildings take out the lead and asbestos, remove it to the proper storage. And then we had to demolish with the exception of one building. We have re-signed a contract with the district. We hope to be making groundwork start before June 30 this year. After that, we think less than two years, nearer 18 months, the first studio could be constructed. El empresario dijo a este medio que ha recibido casi 7 millones de dólares en créditos contributivos por los hoteles Mare y Jade. 
Sin embargo, alegó que tiene derecho a reclamar una suma que sobrepase los 35 millones de dólares por el desarrollo de ambas hospederías y del distrito fílmico. We have not been to the government to collect the rest of our tax credits until we finish the projects. Everybody that is developing here has the right to the tax credits and we're not pushing the envelope, nor ever would, because we're here for Puerto Rico as well as ourselves. And I know that Law 22 is a hot potato on the island at the moment. St. Clair admitió que se beneficia de la polémica Ley 22, que incentiva el traslado de inversionistas a Puerto Rico, pero recalcó que cumple con todos los requisitos. <laughs> um, well, I've spent a lot more than I've gained, let's say that, nothing else. But, but listen, I, I'm not the typical Law 22. I live here, I eat here, I breathe here, I love the country. I love many of the people, not all. Um, I'll send you a list if you want. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but basically, you know, I'm committed. I'm married a Puerto Rican. Uh, I'm committed to Puerto Rico in many, many ways outside of what I'm doing. Uh, I always said that the bar was maybe too low. Maybe Law 22 people should have been expected to make bigger commitments to Puerto Rico from the get-go. I don't know how many of the 1,100 Law 22 people have committed as much capital, energy, and, and, and pure uh, endeavor to create Puerto Rico and make Puerto Rico a better place. That's, that's my mantra. That's what I do. Um, there's nothing else to say, really. I rest on my record. Now, at the moment, people are challenging that record, but I'll rest on it. I have a good moral compass and a clear conscience. El inversionista cuenta con otro proyecto atrasado en el municipio de Calle. Allí adquirió el terreno donde ubica el restaurante The Sand and the Sea con miras a construir residencias y un hotel. Este proyecto no ha iniciado y de hecho tiene un tranque. It's not zoned yet, it's not planned yet. The master plan is being done, but we can't begin our project until the estate planning of one of the sellers of a key component piece of land up there actually completes that, that work. It will be over the next three to four years. It will hopefully become the first mountain resort in Puerto Rico. Y tampoco tiene un plan concreto para el Hotel Zafira en Vieques tras haberlo promocionado hace dos años con pala en mano. It's probably two years delayed from its original planning. We don't own the complete project and we're working with local people to define the project. We're now changing the scope of that project. It's being redesigned, replanned. Um, a new hotel concept is being put together for that. We have um, you know, great hopes that sometime in 22, we will finish the zoning and planning for that and start construction. Bajo esta incertidumbre, St. Clair ahora prioriza un nuevo proyecto. Lo promueve como una operación glamping en Calle y Vieques. Indicó que haría una inversión de entre 300 mil y 700 mil dólares por cada localidad y dejó claro que no frenará sus negocios en Puerto Rico. Only until I die. After that, it's up to my family trust and my executives. I'm committed. Some people say I should be committed, but I'm committed to Puerto Rico. And I'm not going away.